you again. Very well. We shall delve once more into the Dota archives, although my patience is wearing thin. Dota is not some nebulous blob. It is clearly delineated by something called patches. Perhaps this term does not go far enough in describing the effect of these patches, for in truth, they are more than just a jumble of fixes. They can, on occasion, define an era. I remember everyone was complaining about one patch seven years ago, like a troll sniper meta. Impossible to push high ground and like if you lost one fight, you lost the game and it was like... That was probably not the most highest quality Dota, but that was uh, that was a patch, okay? <laughs> I had my game plan every game. Like, I didn't care about what's broken. Sniper sitting there, like, shooting me, uh, who cares? I just go farm. People kind of tunnel vision, like, the conclusion of it, or like, whatever they see, but like, to me, the patch is like a journey, you know? It's like a journey, right? It's more than just the end result. The Sniper Medusa Troll, there was like some fun games there. There used to be a time where Tinker was like really broken with the march. Tinker was one of the very annoying ones when he still had march of machines. You can never push high ground because there is just like a guy spamming robots at you. You can like stack with your march and farm at the same time at mid. So it was just so broken and people who play a good Tinker will just like pick it and just own every game, you know? I remember one of my first matches, I was on EG 2012. Right, I was just a, like a boba, like not many people knew me back then, you know. I was just an NA Dota person and I just played Tinker and I remember we beat Navi in some game and then I I, I, like, uh, I did the March tributes. I think I was the first pro to do it in the game. I love that patch. Hmm, so it was Bulba who pioneered Tinker farming ancients with March of the Machines. He is the one to blame. Sam, Sam, Sam. Surely you get enough hate mail as it is. As for patches, well, you heard it there. Barring a lone dissenting voice, the pro players are in agreement. That patch was an abomination! I'm sure our next will be different, though, hmm? When, like, those Zoom matters are way too broke with, like, for example, those Necronomicon and people stack those auras. You just took the park, you take the storm, you put the sky, you put the sky, and you win. I'm happy. 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 一直在推你，后面威慑可能也觉得很无聊吧，就把那个塔防什么的都改掉了。就是每次推一个塔就会刷一个塔防，当时可能是被威机一直推推推推推。I love that patch. Look, look. I'm a level 25 Furion, almost. So I love that. I love that hero too. In 2015, you would pick Lashrak, and all his spells were insanely overtuned, and there would just be a rainbow horse running around the map killing everyone. No one could do anything to this hero. I remember even at TI5, like, we didn't ban this hero versus Ehome, I think, and after the game, we're like, no, no more playing against, <laughs> no more playing against Disco Pony, we can't do it. That patch was so good. The games were so good. Gyro, Lashrak, like, C-Deck, they kind of came out during TI, like, Undying, Tuscar, like Techies was like, come on, that patch was so good. People just tunnel, like I said, they're just tunnel vision to Lashrak. Yeah, Lashrak was busted, but like Lashrak even got beat near the end. Dota is, was, and always shall be about more than just the heroes. Sometimes the very fabric of the game world itself can become so corrupted and evil that players become lost and confused even angry. One such patch involved gold. Traditionally, the better you performed, the greater your chances of winning. Logical enough. But at one point, doing very, very well was merely setting yourself up for a fall as the scales of Dota justice became unhinged and insane! <laughs> You would be ahead the entire game, and then you would sort of make one mistake, and the enemy specter would get like 
AOE gold on the kill and get 2,000 gold. There was no comeback to the comeback. Once they came back once, it was just over. You have a 30k lead, you die with one hero, suddenly that 30k lead is a 20k lead. Mathematics weren't uh, the strong point at Valve that, that year. Ice Frog goes on a whim and thinks about like, oh, this could be kind of fun, let's just... Fuck the whole game up. That patch, I literally wanted to quit Dota. There was two strategies back then. I remember one of them was just the R buttons. You just had to get all the get every AOE spell with the big A like R buttons. We got the Phoenixes, we got some get the Tide Hunters, get the juggernauts, you know, the jug mag, get that going, you know. And you sit there on your high ground with the ward and you're like, they're gonna throw. Just wait, they're gonna throw. You were winning the whole whole times and then one fight is completely turned. I think it's kind of uh, not balanced. I mean, the game plan was just click the Spectre button as fast as you can. And if you click, if you succeeded, then you won. Or the Storm Spirit button. Those were two very good buttons. Um, without them, it was difficult to succeed. That was, yeah, that patch was bad. Okay, I, I can, I'll plus one that one. That was a bad patch. <sighs> it appears we all have our limits after all. You know a patch is bad when Sam, defender of all patches, admits defeat. But our beloved developers won't. Spare a thought for them. Attempting to balance a game with 123 heroes, an ever-increasing and uncountable number of abilities, items, interactions, creeps, neutral creeps, buildings... Well, you see where I'm going. Balancing Dota is the classic Sisyphean task. And yet... Correct me if I'm wrong, but you love it, don't you? You thirst for the patches. You want the patch. You crave it. You sicken me. Good night.